going on everybody of course my name is blitzwinger aka max and ladies and gentlemen welcome back to of course another fan mode potion video and of course another episode of wwe 2k15 universe mode of course this is episode number two technically speaking it's episode three if you count episode zero as one uh but nonetheless of course we are on the road to extreme rules we've got a really 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 interesting uh matchup being put together uh, or a card overall being put together for extreme rules a lot of really really interesting elements are going to be happening at extreme rules and of course we will kick things off with a big 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 huge announcement that uh, came together basically with Triple H. Um, tonight was actually in the main event. We had planned to see the debut of Dave Batista, but he declined to compete and said that he is only worthwhile competing on pay-per-view and that you will not see Dave Batista on free television because you have to pay to see that man compete. A lot of people, of course, give him a lot of backlash for that, including myself. I think that that is an improper way to approach uh, the WWE, and I think the WWE Universe will definitely react very hostile in a very hostile manner when Batista steps foot in the ring at Extreme Rules against Bray Wyatt. More so than that, I think it would have been a much smarter plan for him to prepare for the match and get into in-ring shape uh, by competing here tonight. I think it would have been a really great warm-up match, but John Cena, ladies and gentlemen, the outstanding class that he is, of course, steps up tonight, saves our main event, because tonight it will be John Cena versus Eric Rowan, but interestingly enough, Triple H added a really, really intriguing stipulation, because if John Cena manages to defeat Eric Rowan, of course, we know that John Cena defeated Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton last week to become the number one contender once again, but if he can defeat Eric Rowan, he will then position himself into the championship match, which will then make it a triple threat at Extreme Rules with Batista, John Cena, and of course Bray Wyatt, which sounds like quite an interesting and volatile situation. Nonetheless, of course, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick off Monday Night Raw. As always, I book the Monday Night Raw show. Uh, all the matches that you see here, I put together, I decide who's going to wrestle who, and then on SmackDown, we just let the... Basically, the game book that particular show. As always, we only play out the main events, but I do simulate the other matches and try to build a little bit of story for those as well. With that being said, we kick things off in a very, very, very epic and high pace as Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville, both men who made their debuts last week and were very, very, very close, were part of the final four in, of course, the elimination match for the Intercontinental Championship number one contendership, which was really, really interesting. I was very surprised by how amazingly, amazingly well, both of these men were able to compete and what kind of a performance they put out. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it is Sami Zayn who is able to secure a long, long, long awaited victory against Adrian Neville, which was very, very, very impressive indeed. We then moved on to, of course, Jimmy and Jay Uso competing against Mizdow and Jimmy and Jay once again approving and uh, more importantly proving their position as number one contender for that gold that is currently being held by Goldust and Cody Rhodes of course as you can see this very very impressive victory by both of these young men they have been on a tear lately and of course tonight they made it official that they want to compete for the titles however they were then interrupted by the one who is known as the awesome one or the self-proclaimed awesome one and he demanded that Miss Dow have a chance to win those titles. However, it was Jimmy and Jay who were able to capitalize, secure victory, and now they will indeed be competing against coal, uh, not cold dust, gold dust, and Cody Rhodes at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Ladies and gentlemen, then we move on to a contest between, of course, Nikki Bella and AJ Lee, a rematch from last week. And this week, as you can see, it is a false count anywhere match after Nikki demanded that AJ should not have any excuses to run away. And tonight, Nikki Bella uses the assistance of her sister Brie Bella, who manages to distract the referee. And in the meantime, Brie was uh, in the meantime. Sorry, Nikki. They're twins. I sometimes get confused. <laughs> in the meantime, Nikki was able to utilize a chair to the back of AJ Lee, and that kept the champion down. And then, of course, Nikki was able to secure the one, the two, the three after the torture rack or the rack attack, sorry, and get the victory. In our co-main event of the evening, as you can see, Goldust and Cody Rhodes are in action. More importantly, Goldust was in action against Xavier Woods, but a little bit of heat, a little bit of a, a little bit of a friction between the brothers of Gold, between Goldust and uh, Cody Rhodes here. 
Um, this is something that they need to work out before uh, the pay-per-view comes along because we saw Jimmy and Jey Uso working very, very well together. If Cody and Goldust cannot get that momentum back together and they have these types of performances, I think that the titles that are currently being held by them are in big, big trouble. But then, of course, as we said earlier on, in our main event of the evening, it will indeed be Eric Rowan, the other member of the Wyatt family. Of course, we've seen Luke Harper start to detach himself from Mr. Wyatt uh, in the last few weeks. It's been kind of interesting to see uh, that occur. We've seen Bray Wyatt speak in a very... Uh, Interesting manner, both on Twitter, of course, he sent out some cryptic tweets, and then on top of that, we've seen him on WWE.com deliver some really, really spooky messages about releasing Luke Harper, something along those lines. I'm not quite sure what that means. Of course, Eric is as freaky as ever, and uh, from what I understand, him and Bray are still working hand in hand. My God, that is one of the freakiest men in the entire WWE locker room. I mean, there's just something about this guy. It, it just sent chills down my spine. I mean, it, it's just, I definitely would not want to be John Cena right now. That is certainly a face only a mother can love. Let's put it that way. And now, ladies and gents, we, oh. Do you see who's coming it's, out? It's the we WWE World Heavyweight like Champion. He makes his way down here. Have a seat right here. He's with us down here. Bray Wyatt makes his way down to the ring. This is a, a bit of an obscure sight. I don't know why he's here again. I guess to support his Wyatt family brethren. Goodness gracious, John Cena. They were in a huge clothesline, of course, after Bray Wyatt critiqued Cena and said that Cena is given way too much in the WWE. He believes that John Cena has been given way too much power within the WWE because he gets too many title shots, too many opportunities. Bray, uh, honestly quoting some real, real facts and information about the fact that John Cena has gotten more number one contender spots than any other man on the WWE roster. But then John, of course, says because he keeps working for it, he keeps winning matches, and that's what separates himself from the rest of the competition. And John Cena delivering a big elbow drop. Then, of course, Bray Wyatt. Uh, making some uh, interesting implications about the fact that uh, John Cena's girlfriend, Nikki Bella, has also been given a title shot just by association. And, uh, well, let's just say, as you can see, John is not too happy with those claims because he has been on the offensive from the very early get-go here against the big man, Rowan. Look at that scoop slam. My God. A lot of power generated by John Cena here. Early on, Cena is staying on the offensive. What's he going for here? Oh my God, oh my God, we don't see John Cena go for a powerbomb very often. That might have been a message to Batista. That maneuver was very similar to a Batista bomb, in my personal opinion. And that might have been a little bit of a sign for Batista, who's probably watching at home, I would imagine. Even though he probably pretends like he doesn't, but I'm sure if he's a smart man, he better be scouting the competition. And there is no higher competition than John Cena and Bray Wyatt at this time. You can't see me. And here comes John Cena with a five knuckle shuffle. Delivers it. My God, what a solid performance from Cena so far. John, he can't even wait for Eric to get up. And look at this now. John Cena has got him up. And the attitude adjustment. The attitude adjustment. But John's not going for the cover. This might be a big mistake in my opinion. I think this might be a big error by John. And John Cena is shifting his attention to Bray Wyatt. This is definitely not where he wants to be. And look at this now. We have a match going on here. And look at this. The champion and the number one contender face to face. And Cena calls Wyatt off. Bray Wyatt, though, runs away. Uh oh, Cena realizes that Eric Rowan is out. Oh, my God. And the big body drop from the big man, Eric Rowan as he elevates John Cena into the air and catapults him right over his head. That was an impressive show of strength by Eric Rowan. My God, look at Cena, though. Nearly beheading the Wyatt member here. And look at that elbow right to the temple. And now John Cena, where's he going? He carries on in. Uh-oh, Cena's going up top. Here we go. John Cena, of course, probably going for that leg drop, I would imagine. Uh oh. You can't see me. Oh my god, the five knuckle shuffle delivered to the stomach. Delivered to the stomach. The one, the two. 
John, what is John doing? That was a little bit odd. This, this is a, this is an interesting John Cena here. I'm just worried he might be getting a little too cocky here. Then again, there really isn't any other man who can uh, win big time matches as well as John Cena. So I hope he just does not make any mistakes. My God, look at that big clothesline. And John Cena looks like he's calling for something else here. Uh-oh. What's he going for? John with a big stomp here. A very aggressive John Cena. That is something that Bray Wyatt has done so exceptionally well. Oh my god, what a maneuver from Cena! What an impressive move from John Cena there! I was very impressed by that. Very, very interesting maneuver there from John. Uh-oh, what's John doing here? He's calling Roan to get up, and he's got him up again! And that's another attitude adjustment! And, and Bray Wyatt is up on the apron there, and John's looking at him as he's got the cover, and that is the three count. John Cena will be added to the triple threat, or at least now triple threat man, main event at Extreme Rules. It will be John Cena, Batista, and Bray Wyatt going to war to decide who will be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. There's that five knuckle shuffle from the top. The entire time Cena keeping his focus on Bray Wyatt more so than Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan never got a chance to even get going. A very game John Cena, but look at this. What is this? John Cena still showing some class at the end here. Giving it up to Eric Rowan, who put up a heck of a fight. But it looks like Eric Rowan did not want to have any of that. So ladies and gentlemen, we of course are only three weeks away from our very first pay-per-view right here on the Fanboy Potion channel, which will be Extreme Rules. I am extremely, get it, excited for that, so that should be pretty fun in deeds. But in the meantime, we are now headed off to SmackDown, where our opening contest of the night is Xavier Woods, Darren Young, and Curtis Axel going to war. All three young men, all three very, very, very high potential competitors within the WWE who are trying to potentially secure their pathway towards several victories so that they can begin the road to, of course, uh, start building up their potential title contender status and uh, tonight Xavier Woods coming off of a big victory against Goldust after that miscommunication between Goldust and Cody Rhodes but tonight he wasn't able to build on that and uh, Darren Young actually with a very very impressive victory here tonight we then move on to Santino Morella who is trying to redeem himself after his performance last week when he was defeated of course when Mr. Um, Wade Barrett and uh, Damian Sanda had to team up in the random tag challenge and uh, of course Mr. Santino Morel was the one that was pinned tonight he is of course able to deliver the Cobra and get the solid victory against Justin Gabriel and then ladies and gentlemen we move on to the match that I cannot tell you how much I was excited to see and this was an absolutely spectacular contest between Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose and Luke Harper. Of course Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins still want to get their hands on one another, still want to go to war but tonight it was Luke Harper who was actually supposed to compete against Dean. Then Seth Rollins gets involved in the matchup and the of course authority decides to make it a triple threat match tonight here and we saw Seth Rollins deliver a very very spectacular curb stump to Luke Harper of course out of nowhere which was very very impressive and now Seth Rollins has got himself a big victory two weeks in a row Seth Rollins securing big big victories positioning himself to potentially be the up-and-coming number one contender for of course the Intercontinental Championship which will uh, be first challenged by Luke Harper so that is quite an interesting little uh, moment to consider there we then move on to some more tag team action and good googly moogly tonight it is Goldust and Cody Rhodes who are able to be on the same page again and these two when they are on the same page I don't know if there's any other tag team on this planet today that can stop these guys because they put a beating on Jimmy and Jey Uso Jimmy and Jey just seem to be one step behind here tonight weren't able to really dance with the big boys and it was Goldust and Cody who were able to get the victory and then for a rematch from last week it is of course Cesaro versus the Big Show Big Show demanding a rematch after suffering a loss to Cesaro last week and Cesaro of course has been on a very very impressive streak in some of the live shows that we've been having um, the non-televised events that is 
Cesaro has been on a tear. He got a really impressive victory against Eric Rowan on Tuesday and then was able to also secure an additional victory on Wednesday when he actually competed against the Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler and that was a very very big surprise to me I was very impressed by the fact that Cesaro was able to get that victory and I think that as I said last week this truly is a new Cesaro my god I think he just decapitated the Big Show did you just see that kick uh oh but Big Show now with a big trip here Cesaro of course just associated himself recently with the managerial work of Lana and she's done a tremendous job of securing interesting contests for Cesaro to compete in he's got a much better spot on TV now much uh higher caliber of opponents that is something that he was demanding for and he said that you know what when i talked to him backstage I, I was genuinely surprised by how honest cesaro was with me and he said look i'm not gonna lie to you i'm realizing that i'm getting older i ain't getting younger any day and look at this crossbody on the big man there and he told me honestly that this is his time this is his time to make a run uh, for the title and this is his time to build his legacy because he wants to make sure that he goes down as one of the best performers the WWE has ever seen goodness gracious the big body drop there by the big show who is certainly one of the greatest performers we have ever seen certainly a future hall of famer is the big show look at these big right hands these were very effective for the big show last time or the last match that these two had oh look at that stomp right on the chest just caves in the ribcage of Cesaro. Oh, look at that punch. I think he's out. I really think he's out. Oh, beautiful reversal. Just when I thought Cesaro was in big trouble. He's going up top. I think Cesaro is realizing that uh, he might need to deliver quite a few aerial maneuvers to slay the giant here tonight. Look at this now. Cesaro. I'm kind of surprised by this. What's he doing? He's sending out the Big Show to... Oh, to the outside. This might not be such a great plan for Cesaro. Just because I think that... His safe bet is to try to keep the fight in the ring. My God! Cesaro with a moonsault. A springboard moonsault by Cesaro. What an impressive man this guy is. How athletic is this guy? Oh my God, look at this boot right to the side of the temple. I mean, I think we were all aware of the fact that Cesaro was a guy that really had a ton of potential but it just seemed like something mentally or whatever it was wasn't clicking but it seems to me ever since Vince McMahon has spoke of the fact that Cesaro doesn't have it he has really stepped it up this is he's just become such a captivating performer to watch and it's really interesting that I do have to be honest as much as I don't like the ways by which Lana uh, gets a lot of the work done and stuff like that to by insulting the audience and by being very very derogatory and such uh oh uh oh oh god I have to admit that she knows how to pick clients I mean Rusev, a very successful United States champion right now potentially future WWE world heavyweight champion of course a very very menacing force in the WWE and now she's also got Cesaro and look at what she's been able to do from a mental standpoint with Cesaro where he's become such a focused performer I mean this is a world-class caliber opponent he's facing off against tonight this is the big show we're talking about look at this northern light suplex from Cesaro so very impressive I mean it's ridiculous how much better this guy has gotten I mean you could just see there's this like little aura of swagger and arrogance about him now that is that wasn't there just a mere two three weeks ago at Wrestlemania I mean it's really spectacular how much he's been able to change look at this big boot just when the big show tries to get a little bit of fire in himself there and now the big elbow right to the back of course it is well known fact that the big show has some back issues and Cesaro exploiting exactly that which is you know what that's smart you got to do what you got to do to be able to secure a victory and I think Cesaro is doing exactly that oh oh my god what a shot uh oh look at this though quick counter there look at how much more I, I, I don't know what it is I'm just I gotta tell you uh oh but this is not good this is not good Cesaro Cesaro is calling for something here Cesaro is calling for something and the Big Show is in La La Land oh my god look at that European uppercut to the Big Show of all people oh my god oh my god the cover one two three wow ladies and gentlemen that might have been one of the greatest knockouts I have ever seen in the WWE ring. He elevates the Big Show two, three feet into the air. And then that European uppercut slices across the... 
oh my god, across the face and the upper chest. And just the amount of force that he's able to generate. You can see the Big Show is just not going anywhere. The Big Giant is going to go into hibernation mode after that performance right there. Uh-oh. What's this? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Well, this is unnecessary. This is unnecessary. And this has got to be... This has got to be instructions set out by Alana. This has got to be... And this is what I always say is that that's the side that I do not like about Alana's managing... Uh, of talent. With that in mind, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of WDB Universe Mode. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, share the video with your family and friends, favorite the videos as well, and I will, of course, catch you guys next time. Peace out. See you later. Alligators. Bye-bye, guys.